Greetings and welcome to our worship today. Uh, we are celebrating the first Sunday in Lent, and I am Pastor Roberta Smythe. I am pastor here at Zion Lutheran Church, where we are recording today. I am also pastor at St. Peter's Episcopal Church, and our accompanist today is Carol Ann St. Clair, and we are very grateful for her musical offerings. In the description box below this video in YouTube, there is an outline of the service as well as a link to the full bulletin in case you'd like to follow along. You may have to click where it says show more to view those. And we'll have the rest of our announcements later in the service. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the keeper of the covenant, the source of steadfast love, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. God hears us when we cry and draws us close in Jesus Christ. Let us return to the one who is full of compassion. Fountain of living water, pour out your mercy over us. Our sin is heavy and we long to be free. Rebuild what we have ruined and mend what we have torn. Wash us in your cleansing flood. Make us alive in the spirit to follow in the way of Jesus as healers and restorers of the world you so love. Amen. Beloved, God's word never fails. The promise rests on grace. By the saving love of Jesus Christ, the wisdom and power of God, your sins are forgiven and God remembers them no more. Journey in the way of Jesus. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Holy God, Heavenly Father, in the waters of the flood you saved the chosen, and in the wilderness of temptation you protected your Son from sin. Renew us in the gift of baptism. May your holy angels be with us, that the wicked foe may have no power over us, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading today comes from the book of Genesis, the ninth chapter. God said to Noah and his sons with him, as for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. I establish my covenant with you that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, this is the sign of the covenant that I make between you and me and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow in the clouds and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh and the waters shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, this is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our gospel comes from the first chapter of Mark. In those days, Jesus from Nazareth of Galilee was Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son, the beloved, with you I am well pleased. And the spirit, spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness 40 days, tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild beasts and the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ.
Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. The evil one once came before God, dejected and whined, Almighty God, I want you to know that I am bored, bored to tears. I go around doing nothing all day long. There isn't a stitch of work for me to do. I don't understand, replied God. There's plenty of work to be done, only you've got to have more initiative. Why don't you try to lead people into sin? That's your job. Lead people into sin, muttered the evil one contemptuously. Why, Lord, even before I get a chance to say a single word to anyone, he has already gone and sinned. That's a story from a collection of Jewish folklore. And it's a fitting description of what must have been going on just before the flood. Humankind didn't need any help in sinning, and in fact was getting quite good at it. Here's God's observation of that situation from earlier in Genesis. The Lord saw that the wickedness of humankind was great in the earth, and that every inclination of the thoughts of their hearts was only evil continually. And the Lord was sorry that he'd made humankind on the earth, and it grieved him to his heart. So the Lord said, I will blot out from the earth the human beings I have created, people together with animals and creeping things and birds of the air, for I am sorry that I ever made them. So God decided to start all over again and sent a flood. Most of us are familiar with the story, Noah building an ark, the dimensions given in cubits, it was made of gopher wood, animals being brought on two by two, 40 days of rain, etc. Our Old Testament reading for today picks up after the flood has abated, and it describes an interesting event, God repenting. Having just finished wiping out all of creation, save the eight humans and various paired animals on the ark, God repents. God tells Noah that this will never happen again. Now, it's not that God thinks humankind is any better after the flood, that somehow the descendants of Noah will be better behaved than the rest of humanity had been. No, God recognizes the truth about us. When a few verses before today's reading, God says, the inclination of the human heart is evil from youth. But God has had a change of heart about how to deal with us. A change of heart is one way we define repentance. And so God repents and makes a covenant with Noah to never destroy creation by flood again. That covenant is sweeping in its scope. It is with all of creation, not just Noah and his descendants, but with all the earth. This covenant is also one-sided. Noah is not required to do anything, nor is the rest of creation. It is God alone who acts, or in this case will refrain from acting in a destructive way. And God places a rainbow in the sky as a reminder of this covenant, this promise. That reminder is not for us, though many of us remember God's pr pr promise when we see a rainbow. That reminder is for God. God says, when the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant. Think about those last three words, the everlasting covenant. Not only does this covenant include all of creation, but it is for all of time. This covenant is the first one recorded in the Bible, and there are a number that follow. And with each covenant, God works on how to deal with us sinful beings. The covenants narrow in scope as time goes on. This first covenant is with all of creation. The covenant God later makes with Abram is for him and all his descendants, but also includes a blessing for all the families of the earth, though the rest of creation is not included. Still later, the covenant God makes with the Israelites in the Exodus story is narrowed down to just the Israelite people. God says, I will take you as my people and I will be your God. And the sinfulness of humanity continued throughout these covenants. Abraham and Sarah doubt God's ability to give them a child and try taking things into their own hands. The Israelites had trouble believing in a God they couldn't see, and so they made a golden calf, an idol they could worship instead of the invisible Yahweh. Throughout the ages, God's people, individually as well as collectively, from the lowest slave to the greatest king, 
kept on sinning, kept on turning from God. Despite this, God kept the covenants, kept his promises, those made to Noah, to Abraham, and to the Israelites. Those covenants, especially the ones that were made at the time of the Exodus and the journey to the Promised Land, were what still guided and controlled Judaism at the time of John the Baptist and Jesus. With the start of Jesus' ministry that we hear in today's Gospel, we have the beginning of a new covenant. God is sending good news in the form of Jesus. Like that first covenant detailed in our Old Testament lesson, the gospel includes both water and a dove. In the flood story, God saves Noah from the waters. In the new covenant, baptism saves with water. In the flood story, the dove brings back signs of new life in the form of an olive branch. In the gospel, the dove heralds new life in the form of God's beloved son. Like that first covenant, this new covenant is for all of creation. As Paul writes in Galatians, there is no longer Jew or Gentile, slave or free, male or female. And in Romans, Paul writes of how creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay. And like that first covenant with Noah, this one is also one-sided. It is all in God's hands. It is all God's doing. There is nothing for us to do, nothing we can do. This season of Lent, which began this past week, is often a time of preparation, reflection, and repentance, as we remember the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus the Christ. We remember th the sacrifice of God's Son and our own sin that made such a sacrifice necessary. During this time, some people will give up something that they enjoy perhaps desserts or another favorite food. Others will add a discipline like prayer or Bible reading. And while it can be helpful to use such practices to remind ourselves of the sacrifices made on our behalf, it is even more important to remind ourselves that it is not these practices that will make us whole. It is not these practices that will save us. Only God's loving grace can do that. That is the good news that Jesus came to proclaim as we heard in our gospel. The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. Amen.
you join me as we confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. For our prayers of intercession, each petition ends, Hear us, O God. And I invite you to respond with, Your mercy is great. Relying on the promises of God, we pray boldly for the church, the world, and all in need. In Jesus, your realm has come near to us in every place and time. Give your church throughout the world a spirit of humility and repentance. Teach us to trust always in the good news of your salvation. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You have made a covenant of mercy with every living creature. Protect all the earth's creatures from destruction. Empower the work of biologists, conservationists, and science educators. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. All your paths are steadfast love and faithfulness. Direct the words and actions of leaders in our community and throughout the world that they may maintain justice for the lowly. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Even in the wilderness, you are with us. Walk alongside migrants and refugees crossing dangerous lands. Tend to those whose lives feel desolate. Give healing and strength to all who suffer. We especially lift up Sharon, Vicki, Stan and Gay, Erna, Mariah, Alvin, Gustav, Suzanne, Barb, Mike, Melissa, Carlisle, Sue, Scott, Tim, Caleb, Thomas, Margaret, Terry, Gertrude, Milton, Julie, Mary Ann, Russell, Catherine, Nathan, Andy, John, Sylvia, Jeannie, Dexter, Joan, Kim, Amy, Jordan, Marlis, Sally, Patricia, Amanda, Sandy, Kyson, Beverly, Carol Ann, Doris, the family and friends of Beatrice, and the family and friends of Jim. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. In the covenant of baptism, you claim us as beloved children. Nurture us in our baptismal identity and teach us to live within it for the sake of others. Strengthen our congregation's ministries of care and concern. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. In baptism, you join us to the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. We praise you for all those who have died trusting in your faithfulness. Bring us with them to the fullness of your reign. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. We entrust ourselves and all our prayers to you, O oh faithful God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
And now we have our thanksgiving for the word. Let us pray. Gracious God, who has named and claimed us, calling us your beloved children, you know the secrets of our hearts. When we sin and stray from your paths, you astound us with your saving grace. For this word of life, we give you thanks and praise. Loving Jesus, living word, in, your, in you the kingdom of God has come near. Through you all that has lost, was lost has been found. Help us to boldly follow wherever you may lead, trusting your promise that we need not fear, for you are with us. For this word of life, we give you thanks and praise. Holy Spirit, the mystery in which we dwell, into our scarcity, your abundance flows. And enliven all communities with your good news. Guide us to love and serve Jesus, giving ourselves away for the sake of the world. For this word of life, we give you thanks and praise. All glory to you, holy God, now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. And now for our announcements. Zion is not worshiping in person and does not plan to do so until the county is in the yellow zone of the state's metrics. Uh, currently, we are in the red zone and there won't be an update to that status until February 24th. Even if Union County were to drop to yellow at that point, we wouldn't have enough time to set up in person for the 28th, so we will be doing online only next Sunday. St. Peter's will not worship in person until at least mid-March, per the bishop's directives. And while the Union County is still in the red or orange level, um, Zion's office will also not be open to the public. I am holding midweek Lenten services by Zoom on Wednesday evenings at 6.30 p.m. The link for those services will go out each Tuesday. The service will follow the structure of evening prayer in the Lutheran uh, worship book and will include the practice of Lectio Divina. The theme for this series is Created for Community and this week we will consider our community with all of creation. We will not have a youth group this Sunday due to a conflict with other meetings. And now receive the benediction. You are what God made you to be created in Christ Jesus for good works, chosen as holy and beloved, freed to serve your neighbor. God bless you that you may be a blessing in the name of the holy and life-giving Trinity. Amen. Go in peace. Share the good news. Thanks be to God. <laughs>